G'day guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, today I've got a D40 Navara, but a petrol version, the V6, and I want to show you a little bit of in-cylinder pressure work. So we've got the 4 litre petrol D40 Navara. Uh, it's the VQ40 engine. And this thing, the, the customer's complaint is it's very sluggish. Okay, so we go for a drive. Um, it's that familiar feeling where you put your foot down, it almost feels like the MAP sensor has a problem. Um, it just goes doo and it doesn't really want to go anywhere. It struggles to rev over 2000 RPM, extremely underpowered. Um, gone through on the, the scan tool and we've looked at some things like the MAP sensor. It's not reading high, but I mean, it's not getting much airflow. So is it the MAP? Is it an actual physical problem? And the MAP's telling the right um, thing. We've looked at some fuel trim, which is um, definitely um, reading erratically. Now, straight away, just by experience, the way this feels to me, it feels like an exhaust restriction, and knowing these Nissan engines um, do tend to like to block the cats up, um, that's where I'm going to head first. I've got someone to give it a rev, and just by feeling with my hand on the, the back of the exhaust, it does feel like there's quite a bit of pressure. So, um, next thing is how are we going to do that effectively? Um, diagnostics comes down to testing the right thing, the right way, at the right time. We have a few options if we want to get into the exhaust of this. Looking at the front O2 sensors, take a bit of time, might strip the threads. You know, probably don't want to do that if I can avoid it. We could um, tap into the exhaust by drilling a hole that we're going to seal up later. Again, fairly intrusive. Don't want to do that if I don't want to. So an option we have is using a scope with pressure transducer in cylinder. That's going to allow us to see all pressure changes inside that combustion chamber. Um, when the exhaust valves open, essentially the combustion chamber is now a part of the exhaust. We should not see any excessive pressure there. The pressure that we're reading there is akin to the pressure you would read if you had a gauge in the front O2 sensor. So I'm going to take the easy setup. I'm going to pull a plug. I can get to either bank on this. I can at least get to one plug on each bank. A couple of them are hidden by the um, intake manifold, but we're concerned with the exhaust. So I only need to get into one cylinder. And that will give me a full um, health test of that bank exhaust. So let's get it all set up. So connection of the in-cylinder pressure transducer couldn't be much easier, guys. I've got a spark plug out of the back there where I can reach. Um, we're simply going to put in this compression hose, just like any other compression test, but we've got a fitting at the end that is able to attach to our pressure transducer via BNC cable. We've then got that going over to our scope. So we're gonna do um, driver's bank, and then we'll go over and do the passenger bank. Okay guys, so we've got the scope open now. I'm gonna go and tell it that I've got a pressure transducer in. So that's the WPS 500X in range one. Um, so that, you can see as opposed to channel B that's reading in voltage, channel A is now reading in PSI. Um, we've got one second per division here. I can zoom in, so um, I, I do wanna capture all that. So essentially we just need to go start the car and I'll give it a rev as well so that we get a true indication of pressure at higher RPM. Got it running there, and now we'll give it a rev and turn her off. So let's go back and take a look at our capture. And we can see here is where we've um, stabilized after starting, so that's my main section I want to look at. Um, there's a, a whole day course that I've um, run regarding looking at this in cylinder compression waveform so I won't get into too much detail but the main thing we're after is if I drag this down instead of dragging let's just type 0 psi so this is my atmospheric pressure line right um, this is compression in the cylinder uh, achieving close to 100 psi yes that is correct for a running engine I won't go into the details um, down here is our exhaust valve opening after the expansion stroke or power stroke if you prefer while the, the spark occurring if there was um, obviously there's no spark occurring at this point because we've got the spark plug out. Um, this is the exhaust valve opening here, so we should return to atmospheric pressure. We should have this, this point here is essentially the pressure in our exhaust. Now if I drag another cursor down, sitting here at idle, I've got near on 23 psi of pressure in my exhaust. And then so on and so forth, we get to the intake stroke and, and we don't care about that. This is our, our problem area. So that's only at idle. Let's go, when I've revved it up over here, and if we truly do have an exhaust restriction, it's gonna get pretty wild. Drag that up, 
and we've achieved closer to let's say 40 psi i mean the the top point's closer to 50 psi so we have 40 to 50 psi back pressure in that exhaust um, well in the combustion chamber which it, with the exhaust valve open this section this is the combustion chamber being attached to the exhaust at this point. So this pressure is in the exhaust. Um, we 100% do have a massive blockage of the exhaust. Sure, that could be anything ranging from an exhaust um, cam lobe that is not opening the exhaust valve. It, it could be um, a restriction of the catalytic converter. There's a lot of things that go into it. But given that I can see some event happening here, um, I'm gonna say that it, it definitely has an exhaust restriction. So perhaps that was a new way for you to see um, how you can measure exhaust back pressure. Now, if you've got a quirky job or you, know, you want some input into um, a different way to test something, make sure you're putting up your, your jobs onto TAT Assist. So if you've got a quirky job, you're struggling, um, fill out the TAT Assist form, you can log it in there, and then all members along with the TAT Assist team can help you out. A lot of the time, um, it may just be getting a bit of conversation going that sparks a lot of the time um, you, the user that submitted the case, to actually get to the root cause of it themselves. But it's just good to talk it over, and we may be able to throw out maybe a different test method like this that you, you haven't heard of before. So get on to TAT Assist on the website there for members, and um, we can all help each other out. Thanks, guys.